Dear students, today we are going to read a very wonderful and sweet simple poem by William Wordsworth. The title of our poem is I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud. Now a few words about William Wordsworth. William Wordsworth is an English poet and he was known or rather he is known for his poems of nature okay so we'll do the explanation and the background of the poet later first let us read the poem so certain things I'll just tell you the background what's going on here so this particular poet Wordsworth he is recollecting that how once he went for a walk and there he saw some beautiful flowers daffodils okay and then he enjoyed that and after a long time he comes back and then he recollects that and he's thrilled with his experience and then pens it down okay writes it down in the form of this beautiful poem so let's begin I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high over vales and hills when all at once I saw a crowd a host of golden daffodils beside the lake beneath the trees fluttering and dancing in the breeze continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay Ten thousands I saw at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. For oft, when on my couch I lie, in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills, and dances with the daffodils. Alright, let us read it once again. Now, stanza by stanza. I wandered lonely as a cloud. That is, the poet William Wordsworth is saying that when he went for seeing this particular sight, he wandered, that is, he moved around without any kind of, that is, a leisurely move, okay, casually he was moving, okay, lonely as a cloud. And here the figure of speech is a simile comparison I wandered lonely as a cloud as you see how the clouds move in the sky so I, I wandered lonely like them that. that floats on high over vales and hills okay so vales here means valley and hills you know when all at once I saw a crowd a host of golden daffodils and as he was seeing so you see here what's happening the landscape first he sees the skyscape okay so he makes you imagine that the sky clouds the clouds are stationary almost stationary they're moving lonely aimlessly and then suddenly he saw a crowd of daffodils the daffodils are flowers okay yellow very bright yellow in color and when they grow they grow in abundance everywhere you know it turns into like golden yellow flower all around and a host of golden daffodils beside the lake beneath the trees fluttering and dancing in the breeze so they are everywhere beside the lake the water bodies beneath the trees and what they are doing they are fluttering and dancing in the breeze so 
as the air moves okay this daffodils they they also move with the breeze the flowers okay so the poet is imagining as if they are very happy and they are enjoying the cool breeze the next stanza continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the milky way so now you see how he relates this okay with an extended you know with an extended simile and he says that continuous so how how wide was the spread of the daffodils continuous it's a hyperbole okay a figure of speech which says that that it's so big how big it's very big it's very wide it's continuous continuous like the stars that shine and twinkle on the milky way so this daffodils are from everywhere to everywhere it's appearing okay everywhere it has come in full bloom and it seems like the milky way never ending that wide okay they stretched in never ending line along the margin of a bay 10000 saw i at a glance this is again another hyperbole 10000 i saw at one glance it's not possible to see 10000 or even if you see you are not going to sit and count the whether there was 10000 or 10 lakh okay but it's a way of saying it's a figure of speech to to say that they were they were more than enough that you can count tossing their heads in sprightly dance so again okay they are dancing in the breeze so it's just a common sight you might have also seen such beautiful flowers okay but you might have not thought of writing it in the form of a poem but since wordsworth is a nature poet he finds this as a raw material for his poetry for his work of art and he is reliving this past memory this experience okay and presenting it to you in such a way that whenever you read it you will be able to visualize to see and it will channelize the power of nature within you through the power of his words the waves beside them danced but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee the waves you know he has talked about the lake so even the lake water it was sparkling and moving because of the wind but they were moving in such great joy that was out that outdid that means that oh, that was making the other things other movements less visible a poet could not but be gay now looking at this sight a poet like wordsworth cannot but be gay that means has to be gay gay here means happy okay joyful in such a jocund company jocund again means joyful okay cheerful or light hearted okay i gazed and gazed gazed means i saw okay so there are different synonyms for gaze look steadily intently okay especially in admiration surprise or thought okay but little thought i gazed and gazed but little thought okay i was just seeing and seeing and see and i hardly thought the thought comes later we'll see about it in the next stanza that what wealth the show to me had brought okay that this this vision this sight that i am seeing is has made me wealthy because what makes you wealthy this vision why it makes you wealthy because you can cherish it okay it goes to your memory bank okay and then you can retrieve it and spend it at your disposal when you really want to think about it and feel happy and what at the moment see the sentence has not ended here it goes with a semicolon sorry colon and it says for oft of means for often when on my couch i lie that means when on my seat 
or a sofa i lie in vacant or in pensive mood okay vacant means you know without any kind of thought pensive that is engaged in involving in reflecting deep or serious thought they flash upon that inward eye now this inward eye we know that our eyes are outward because we see what we perceive whatever is there outside but there the poet says about an inward eye and what is this inward eye it is your imagination your thought process okay you think you you retrospect that what was there okay so that is the inward eye where you make all this assumptions you make judgment you make decisions you think that what you saw you consider you reconsider so those are the work of the inward eye that is your consciousness okay they flash upon that inward eye okay that memory which is the bliss of solitude and what is that inward eye it's the bliss okay it's a blessing of the solitude of the loneliness okay so in loneliness you are not feeling sad okay it's a blissful thing and when you are lonely when you are alone what do you do you think about these beautiful memories of your of of you spending with nature and then my heart with pleasure fills and thinking about this my heart fills with pleasure and dances with the daffodils okay and again he relives he relives those memories those happy moments that he spent in the nature looking at the daffodils okay so this is the small and beautiful poem now we'll talk about the background of this particular poem when was it written what is the period of this particular poet okay whose words were what are daffodils we'll see it now these are the daffodils when we make a direct comparison between two unrelated objects so i as a human being i am comparing that i wandered lonely as a cloud secondly you see there are other the other figure of speech that is metaphor okay fluttering and dancing in the breeze beside the lake beneath the trees fluttering and dancing in the breeze now dancing is a quality that is applicable only for animate objects who can dance like human beings okay so this is a human quality which we are bringing here for the flowers uh, the other thing that we can notice is the word dance you see how many times this particular word dance appears in different forms so here you have here dancing in the breeze next you have here a sprightly dance so dancing dance next again you'll see the waves beside them danced and then again dances with daffodils so this is poetic creativity with which he uses the same word with different imagery like sometimes it danced it dancing so the fluctuation in the time in the temporal period okay it takes you sometime to the past sometime to the present sometime it dwindles between the past and the present so just like our memory when we think okay it does not follow the time sequence okay. so this is called personification the other non living objects and there are other other elements as well like dancing so there as if dancing people 
okay so he, though he is alone so in that solitude what gives him this joy this personification gives him the joy within the nature in in its meaning 